So now we take a look at the NVIDIA high bandwidth bridge. So the high bandwidth bridge is in the end nothing else than two LED bridges we are, which are just um, combined on one PCB. So you can see this here, for example on the left side um, you can see all those traces going straight from the top, um, top left connector to the bottom left connector and you can also see the same on the right side. So there is nothing special, there is no IC on this um, uh, bridge or anything uh, which would do any kind of calculation. This is a closer picture of one of the connectors and here you can see um, the, tra the trace adjustments um, to adjust the trace length. So it's actually the same like on the single LED bridge, it's just with two connectors to increase um, the theoretical bandwidth to use the two fingers of the SLI connector. Here is another interesting shot. So on this um, EVGA uh, high bandwidth bridge you have a switch for the LED and you can um, see a close up here and also again you have those uh, small voids inside uh, the soldering which is a very interesting thing to see. I think for, uh, for x-ray pictures I don't think you see that every day. So that's just uh, one uh, more piece of information but that's also nothing special. Um, all the voids inside the soldering were perfectly inside the tolerance so uh, in all bridges the soldering was quite good. Um, according to the laboratory um, the NVIDIA uh, high bandwidth bridge and um, uh, the, SL, uh, the LED bridge had a little bit better soldering quality than the older bridges um, but everything was still within the tolerances so that should not have any kind of impact or influence on the data or on the um, performance. Here's another picture I forgot about. So again uh, you have the right side of the SLI bridge of the HB bridge and here you can see all those trace length adjustments on the top and on the bottom to make sure they all have the same length. and. Here's something uh, which made me wonder a little bit. So in between those two connectors there is one trace and I was wondering why is there this specific one trace. The big question for me was how does the driver identify the bridge as a high bandwidth bridge because there is obviously nothing on it. There is not an IC or anything which could communicate with um, the graphics card so there, ha there must be some other kind of way um, how the bridge, uh, how the graphics card can identify the bridge which is used. So I started doing some measurements on the SLI bridges. I just took a running system and I started uh, tracking down with a multimeter um, which pin has, has which voltage and what is doing what. So here's a picture of the top part of the um, high bandwidth bridge and now I will show you all the different soldering spots and what they actually do. So you have those six bigger um, spots around the connector and those are just for the shielding of um, the SLI bridge, so the stuff which, which is around here. Um, that, that's just a ground connection, that's nothing which is really um, needed. And all the blue pins you can see now, those are actually the pins for the data connection. And the funny thing is, if you count the connector, connectors inside um, this, uh, I mean if you count all the pins inside the connector, you will notice that there are 26 pins. However, if you count the traces, then you will notice, notice that there are only 20 traces going from one connector to the other. So there are actually six traces which are not used directly um, as a connection. So I wanted to track down those six uh, pins obviously. So here you can see uh, five uh, yellow pins and those pins are also additional ground pins so those just make sure that the, um, both cards and the, also the SLI bridge are on the same voltage level um, that's just for be better um, signal quality that's nothing special. So the special thing which I found out is um, the pin on the middle which you can see now the red pin and this is what I call the ID pin, the identification pin. No clue how NVIDIA is calling this because there is uh, no data available um, for this. But I noticed if you take an older bridge like the uh, solid bridge or the flexible bridge, this pin is also connected to ground like the other yellow pins. But on this um, specific uh, high bandwidth bridge, it's not connected to ground. It's just open and it delivers 1.8 volt. And those 1.8 volt um, are actually also the voltage supply for the LED. In the end this one pin is the identification pin to make sure uh, 
if it's an, a flexible old bridge or if it's a new high bandwidth or LED bridge. So whenever it's a high bandwidth or LED bridge, it's just not bridged to ground and that's how the driver or the cart can identify uh, the SLI bridge. So I already told you that I noticed this specific trace which is connecting um, two connectors on the x-ray picture. I will show you again just to make sure you know what I'm talking about. So I'm talking about this trace here and the trace is also visible even on the PCB directly. I can show you the picture here and um, this trace is connecting both uh, both connectors on the card directly on the ID pin. I'm not sure if this is really necessary. Um, it could also be that it just makes sure that uh, all the connectors are on the same voltage level. I also tried to uh, use two of the LED bridges on, on uh, one card and it also detects the same as using one high bandwidth bridge so it's probably not even needed to connect those specific connectors. So the big question for me was how does this in the end influence the performance? So I listened to your feedback and I'm not only doing a 3D mic result, but of course we are doing a 3D mic Firestrike Extreme as well. Um, so what I tested was um, I used one flexible bridge, I used two flexible bridges, I used the LED bridge and I also used the high bandwidth bridge to compare a setup which was running two GTX 1080 and two-way SLI and I was running um, everything on 4K resolution except for um, Firestrike Extreme obviously but let's take a look at the results. So this is Firestrike Extreme and you can see the performance with one flexible and two flexible bridges is almost the same. You can see it's around 18,900 points and once you switch to either one LED bridge or one high bandwidth bridge it increases to around 19,100. I listened to your feedback really so um, I did some gaming benchmarks and the first benchmark I did was Crisis 3 so I was running um, my own kind of benchmark internally was running the same uh, in-game um, sequence for one minute and I did the same run five times and I took the average FPS of this and here you can see the results so Crisis 3 um, you can see that there was no FPS gain whatsoever between one flexible, two flexible, LED and high bandwidth bridge. There was no difference. And here is the result of the new Far Cry. You can see 81 average FPS for one flexible bridge and also for two flexible bridges. And you can see a slight um, FPS increase using one LED bridge or one high bandwidth bridge. Reading through all the reviews online, I noticed that one specific review was pointing out that Rainbow Six Siege had a really nice performance gain using the high bandwidth bridge. So of course I wanted to see this kind of performance boost as well. And I got uh, my hands on Rainbow Six Siege and here are the performance results. So one flexible bridge had 57 um, average FPS, two flexible bridges, 58. I had a slight performance increase with one LED bridge or one high bandwidth bridge to 61 FPS. So that's an increase of uh, three FPS, which is roughly 5%. So what's the conclusion? For me personally, um, I have to say that most of the stuff Nvidia is telling is just marketing stuff. Uh, so the high bandwidth bridge is of course technically a little bit better because it has an adjusted trace length um, which makes it more um, suitable for high frequency operations which is probably the reason why they could increase from 400 to 650 megahertz but I do not believe anything like um, that it increased um, the performance significantly or that they invested a lot of uh, research into this because obviously there is not a big change whatsoever. I mean really like two or three FPS um, yeah not a, a significant gain. Of course if you get um, two, two GTX 1080 uh, and you invest 2000 USD or whatever of course you can invest also 50 uh, USD in a, uh, in a good SLI bridge. Uh, no need to discuss that. So yeah, that's it for now. Um, I also did some very interesting testing running GTX 1080 in three-way and four-way SLI. And this video will go online in a few days. Stay tuned until that. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and got some very useful information out of this. Uh, stay tuned, see you soon.